Good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first meeting of 2020 of the Ottawa Board of Health. Given that the first item on today's agenda is the confirmation of the chair and vice chair, as board secretary, I will preside over the beginning of the meeting, beginning with the roll call. Member Bannum? Member Coutier? Vice Chair Di Giovanni? Present. Chair Aglai? Present. Member El Shantiri? Present. Member Gower? Present. Member Cavanaugh? Present. Member Lakin? Present. Member Minaw? Ici. Member Pinel? Present. And Member Tilly? Present. We have quorum. Thank you. Uh, regrets, we didn't receive anyone and everyone's here, so uh, declarations of interest. Hearing none, uh, can we confirm the minutes of the meeting of December 9th, 2019? Carried. And communications as listed in the agenda, received? Received. Member Lakin? Chair and Vice Chair report. The Chair of the Board of Health verbal report. Medical Officer of Health verbal report in the reports titled Public Health Modernization Update on Public Health Submissions in Response to Provincial Consultations. Ottawa Public Health Plan to uh, Support Older Adults to Age Well in Our Community. Ottawa Public Health Submission to the Government of Ontario on the Healthy Parks, Healthy People Consultation. Ottawa Public Health Submission to Health Canada on Proposed Vaping Products. Promotion uh, regulations and attendance at the Association of Lo Local Public Health Agencies 2020 Winter Symposium and Board of Health Section Meeting be received and considered. Is that carried? Thank you. First item on the agenda is the confirmation of Chair and Vice Chair. Recommendation one, that the Board of Health for the City of Ottawa Health Unit confirm the election of Councillor uh, Keith Eglai as Chair for 2020 to be confirmed at the first meeting of each year of its term. Is that carried? Thank you. Chair Aglai, would you like to take over? Yes. Uh, yes, thank you very much um, for your support for another year. Um, uh, part two of that motion is confirm the election member Tammy Giovanni as vice chair t uh, for 2020 to be confirmed at the first meeting of each year of its term as required by the Health Protection and Promotion Act. Uh, carried? Okay. Welcome back, vice chair. I'll now go through the uh, consent agenda. Um, so first of all, we have uh, my verbal report, which uh, will hold uh, Dr. Etches, uh, followed by Dr. Etches' verbal report. We then have uh, the um, public health modernization update on public health submissions in response to the provincial consultations. And uh, we have a PowerPoint presentation for that, so we'll hold that as well. Uh, number five is uh, Ottawa Public Health Plan to support older adults to age well in our community. And again, we have a PowerPoint presentation, so we'll hold that. Uh, number six is auto public health submission to the government of Ontario on the Healthy Parks, Healthy People consultation. Uh, there is no uh, presentation there uh, so we could uh, we could carry that um, or receive that rather uh, if everybody's all right with that okay received okay um, number seven is uh, Ottawa Public Health uh, submission to Health Canada on proposed vaping pr products promotion regulations and again there is no presentation and we would simply be receiving this document okay Thank you. Um, number eight is attendance at the Association of the Local Public Health Agency Alpha 2020 Winter Symposium and Board of Health section meeting. Uh, and again, no presentation, and it's that the Board of Health for the City of Ottawa Health Unit approve the attendance of member, member El Chantieri at the Association of Local Public Health Agencies Winter Symposium and Board of Health section meeting to be held February 20th uh, to 21st, 2020 in Toronto. Uh, carried? Okay, thank you, Member El Shantiri. Um, uh, under information previous to dispute, uh, distri distri distribute, not disputed, um, we have uh, the uh, Strategic Road Safety Action Plan update. And uh, can we uh, receive this? Okay, thank you very much. I will go back now to uh, the, uh, I'll go to my verbal report. So uh, good evening, bonsoir, Quay. Again, uh, thanks uh, to my fellow board members for uh, 
agreeing to uh, let me uh, carry on uh, in the role of chair again this year. Uh, this is a, a role I, I enjoy quite a bit and, and uh, part of that is working with this board which I find to be very collaborative uh, and, uh, and very productive. So, so thank you for that. Um, I'd like to begin by honoring the Algonquin people on whose traditional unceded territory the City of Ottawa is located. I'd like to extend this respect to all First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, their ancestors, their elders and their valuable past and present contributions to this land. In tonight's verbal update, I'll be highlighting a few recent events. So first, the Ottawa Inner City Mobile Health Clinic powered by TELUS Health. Ottawa Public Health is proud to be partnering with TELUS Health, Ottawa Inner City Health, the Royal, the Sandy Hill Community Health Centre, and the Somerset West Community Health Centre to bring a new mobile health clinic to Ottawa. This new service, officially launched last month, will provide increased access to primary care, social interventions, and mental health services to members of our community impacted by substance use and homelessness or unstable housing. Staffing for the Mobile Health Clinic includes a nurse practitioner, mental health nurse, a psychiatrist, and people with lived experience. This peer team plays an essential role in linking people who need care to the mobile clinic to ensure those with the greatest needs receive care and the ongoing support needed to truly benefit from the service. The mobile clinic will be offering services from a series of locations, supporting those ex experiencing access barriers throughout Ottawa, bringing health care to the very places where people who use drugs need them. It is through initiatives like this that we can offer people the care and supports they need for improved health, well-being and social connectedness. The time of the event was such that neither myself nor Vice Chair G. G. Giovanni nor I were able to attend. However, I'd like to thank Member Tilly uh, for attending and for speaking on behalf of the Ottawa Board of Health. Uh, another event that took place was uh, Safe Talk training for counselors and staff. On January the 21st, Ottawa Public Health delivered a Safe Talk suicide prevention workshop to four city counselors and 18 counselor staff. Suicide prevention is an important health, public health priority and delivering the suicide prevention workshop internally at the City of Ottawa to staff as well as for partners in the community is part of Ottawa Public Health's comprehensive mental health and substance use strategy. As city councillors and staff, community members often reach out to us when they are experiencing challenges. These challenges come in many forms. And the most serious can be difficult to assist and address. This is why, as Chair of the Board of Health, my office and I helped to coordinate an opportunity for city councillors and their staff to attend a training session on suicide prevention. The Safe Talk Suicide Prevention Program or training provides participants with skills to recognize someone with thoughts of suicide and how to provide that individual support in a safe way. Participants were also given information as to how to connect with an individual with suicide first aid resources in the Ottawa community. I'm appreciative of my councillor colleagues who attended, including two from the Board of Health, Councillors Gower and Councillor Cavanaugh. Thank you very much. Uh, we also put on a suicide prevention training for the media on Friday, January 24th with the support of world-renowned suicide prevention expert Dr. Mark Signor, OPH, held a session with local media to discuss the topics of suicide and how and when to report on suicide to ensure safety and minimize harms. Suicide prevention is a priority for Ottawa Public Health. We know from research and evidence that the way suicide is discussed publicly, including the media, can have an impact on those who are struggling with thoughts and feelings of suicide, both a positive and a negative impact. This session was a learning opportunity for all participants who took away information that will help shape and inform communications in a way that will help those in need encouraging them to reach out for support, supporting those who have lost others to suicide, and ensuring we are doing what we can to reduce harms and risk. We are grateful that journalists and editors from CTV Ottawa, Post Media, CBC and Radio Canada, 1310 News and Ottawa Matters Global Staff, Staff and Media Relations with the Auto Police Services and the City of Ottawa, as well as Deputy Police Chief Steve Bell, took time out of the busy schedules to attend, learn and share. The Rural uh, Ontario Association of Roma held its annual conference January 19th to 21st. Members that may recall that when the Ministry of Health released its discussion papers on modernization in November, we were told that preliminary findings were to be reported at Roma. I understand that this, this did take place and given that one of our board members, Member El Chantieri, attended Roma as one of the city's representatives, I would like to invite him to update board members on the updated 
uh, on the update rather, provided to Roma delegates last month. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and congratulations on re-election. Uh, yes, we had uh, we had a conference just to put a little bit about Roma. It's the rural municipality of Ontario. It represents 440 uh, municipality. Uh, the conference was attended by over 1,400 delegates, and uh, one of the I would say one of the top three items on the agenda was uh, public health uh, reform. And uh, so as an executive on Roma, we met with Mr. Uh, Pine, Jim Pine, who was assigned from the, or by the province to lead uh, the, the discussion right across the province. We met with him and the ministry staff. And uh, we, ha we didn't hear any new information other than the, the consultation still happening and taking place uh, across the province. And they were scheduled to come to Ottawa the first week of February, but the cancellation because of the, the outbreak of the virus. Uh, uh, but in the discussion with Mr. Pine, what made it clear, they, they are reforming the public health, but they, are, they were a little bit short on the detail what our recommendation is. Uh, one of the, you know, many questions which took place, we met three times with Mr. Pine, one with the executive of Roma, one in a public forum where many people asked questions about uh, the next step, and then one with the minister and Mr. Pine himself, and uh, uh, they're still in the process, and there's two items they're working on at the same time. The uh, DMS service, the, 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 they're going back to the old model of uh, paramedic uh, dispatch, uh, and also reforming the public health care. Uh, our city received uh, more than once recognition, and more than once Mr. Pine used Ottawa has been proactive, working with our neighbor in uh, Renfrew County. Uh, he suggested maybe we should expand to, uh, uh, to uh, Lanark County as well. And as I mentioned to him, well, it takes two sometimes to, to work together. But uh, they are listening, and they haven't said much other than the announcement will come later on. Uh, and I think they're going to make the announcement on both at the same time, EMS reform and the uh, and the uh, public health. Uh, now, the funding is a very important issue. It's not just for us. We heard from all, all of our colleagues right across the province. Some, uh, some area, they might have to disband their public health unit because some of the discussion taking place to be within the 500,000 people. So that means you're looking for an area larger than Italy, but then you have one board, so it'll be logistically impossible for these people to meet or work together, especially up in the north when you don't have the, the population to meet the 500,000 or even the 100,000 in some places. So uh, that a discussion taken on its own, how they, they're going to be dealing with that. But uh, one of the compliments we heard is about our uh, shared service. They, they use Ottawa, you know, Ottawa is willing to do some uh, cost sharing service with the, with the neighboring municipality. They mentioned Dr. Vera by name and Dr. Cushman working together on this. And they said that's what we like to see more of a, bro, a proactive approach uh, right across the province. But uh, the funding formula was not, and it was talk about uh, 30, 70, uh, 75, 25, but I mean it was no numbers specific. The concern we heard from our small municipality in the north was that formula they're talking about will not help them at all with the, with the, with the area or the geography and the challenge we have in that area. Uh, but uh, again, they, they did say it's not going to be 10, but it's not going to stay as the current number either, but they will not say what number they will uh, I have to tell you, uh, Mr. Pine himself, he seems doing more damage control to the government because uh, A, anytime they talk to government official, the, the, the local, they're not, in, they're not comfortable with that discussion. And Mr. Pine is trying his best to bridge the, between the small municipality and the ministry. And I think it's a big job ahead of him, but uh, we push him well. But that's basically, there was no, 
official announcement, but all the stuff we I met with Dr. Atchis before I went to uh, to Roma, she gave me some material. I, I spoke with Mr. Pine. Uh, like what I said, he holds Ottawa in a high regards, but uh, there was no commitment on that part. Thank you very much. Um, now, the, the, the subject obviously has been front and center for, for uh, for OPH for almost a year. Uh, we're going to be having a staff report a little bit later tonight uh, about that. And Dr. Etches and her team are working very hard on consulting various partners, stakeholders, soliciting ideas and suggestions from OPH staff, reaching out to provincial representatives, and to offer other health units uh, to put forward a thoughtful proposal for a stronger public health sector. An in-person meeting with the ministry's consultation team, as, as Mayor Welsh Ontario pointed out, had been scheduled for February the 4th, but has been postponed in light of the novel, novel uh, coronavirus and the need for readiness planning by both the public health and emergency health services personnel. As of today, we do not have a new date for the in-person meeting, and board members will, will let you know as soon as we do know that. Um, Dr. Etches will also be talking a little bit later tonight about the uh, public health modernization uh, proposal uh, in the context of the report that's on our agenda later tonight. And I also want to take just a very brief uh, moment to uh, just to thank Dr. Etches and her team uh, for the work that they've done so far in responding to the uh, to the virus. Uh, we had a presentation just before uh, board on, on all the steps that have been taken, uh, all the things that we should be doing going forward, both as an organization and as individuals uh, in the community. And uh, you know, I've, I've been very impressed by just how on top of it uh, from the very beginning that the public health team has been. Um, keeping me informed, keeping the mayor's office informed, keeping the public informed. Um, going to council, making presentations there as to what's going on. And uh, so uh, I know we will, but I, I urge you all to continue to support Dr. Etches and her team in this. Um, as I say, she'll be talking about it more, but you know, we're in the midst of it. It's, it's uh, and uh, you know, things will happen, days will change, uh, but I, I feel quite confident that we have the team in place to respond to it in a very agile and, and very uh, proactive way. So I want to thank Dr. Etches and her team for that. Um, I now want to turn the mic over to Dr. Etches for her verbal report, unless there are any questions uh, arising out of mine. Okay, Dr. Etches. Hey, bonsoir. Good evening, everyone. Quay. I will provide an update this evening on a variety of topics, including the current influenza season, novel coronavirus, the cannabis edibles, the new seniors dental program, Ottawa area Ontario health teams, and our 2019-2022 strategic priorities. So, commençons par la saison actuelle de la grippe. As of Friday, Ottawa Public Health has dist distributed 268,000 doses of the influenza vaccine to providers in the community, which is already more than we distributed last season. And we continue to distribute doses each week. And additionally, pharmacies have received 173,000 doses from the Ontario government. In total, Ottawa Public Health has offered 54 immunization clinics in the community at hospitals, group homes, shelters, and other situations where people are at higher risk. So far, we've provided 11,000 doses of influenza vaccine ourselves, compared to 9,400 last year. Ces chiffres indiquent un désir continu de recevoir des vaccins de SPO, malgré l'accessibilité dans le secteur privé. And the vaccine is still available from pharmacies and physicians' offices, as well as through Ottawa Public Health for children under five, uh, where pharmacies are not providing that service, and their family members. So if a family comes with a five-year-old, we'll help everyone. Since the start of the last season, there have been 500 laboratory confirmed cases of influenza reported in Ottawa, about 70% influenza A and 30% influenza B. This is only the tip of the iceberg of the infection in the community because obviously not everyone receives a lab test. We've had 31 influenza outbreaks in institutions, so the team is busy. We continue to see uh, influenza circulating, both A and B. So I'll turn now to the topic of the novel coronavirus outbreak that's been the subject of much media coverage. 
On December 31st, 2019, Wuhan, China reported a cluster of cases of pneumonia, which were later confirmed as caused by a new uh, type of coronavirus not previously identified in humans. On January 30th, the World Health Organization declared an outbreak this outbreak, a public health emergency of international concern, given the number of cases that it occurred beyond China's borders and evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. So Ottawa Public Health was monitoring the outbreak throughout January. We created a new web page uh, on this subject and many information products for partners. On January 28th, Ottawa Public Health moved into enhanced operations and we put in place an incident management structure which facilitates decision making and the flow of information. Ottawa Public Health is following the lead of the Ontario Ministry of Health, Public Health Ontario and the Public Health Agency of Canada in responding to the novel coronavirus and our focus is keeping the people of Ottawa well. The current strategy in Canada and Ontario and Ottawa is to detect cases of the novel coronavirus in people who have traveled to an affected area or people who have been in close contact of a confirmed case and then limit local transmission. Self-isolation of returning travelers has recently been added to screening measures and distribution of information at entry points to Canada. So we are working closely with our hospitals, the Champlain Local Health Integration Network, local community health centers, and various emergency service providers like paramedics, fire, and police to ensure that everyone has timely and accurate information. I recently did provide an update to City Council and the City's Emergency Control Group where we discussed the contributions of various city departments. We've also been providing information and support to local schools, school boards, child care, long-term care, post-secondary institutions, the international airport, bus and train stations, community resource and service centers, and other organizations that serve and interact with the public in various capacities and sectors. The Public Health Agency of Canada has assessed the public health risk associated with the current novel coronavirus as low for Canada, and so the risk to the public is currently, you know, continuously assessed as new information becomes available. But there are no confirmed cases or presumptive cases of novel coronavirus in Ottawa. If we were to get a suspect, suspected case, um, we would be working with Public Health Ontario around the laboratory testing and confirmation, uh, Ontario Ministry around communications protocols, and local hospitals around management of the case and any contacts. So working with our partners, um, including the Ottawa Police, community centres and social services, we also are aiming, uh, as we communicate, to reduce stigma and discrimination towards people who may have travelled from an affected area. We understand the situation has been causing anxiety and people have many questions and so really the best resource for folks in Ottawa is to visit our webpage ottawapublichealth.ca backslash coronavirus for the latest information. Santé publique Ottawa continuera de travailler avec nos partenaires de surveiller la situation et de fournir des mises à jour aux besoins. There are things residents can do to reduce the spread of a respiratory infection, uh, which are useful now for, for the influenza in our community. I'm not sure I really need to repeat them. I'm, I'm hoping you could all join me and say, like, wash your hands, <laughs> cough into your elbow. Um, there are, are these basic things that really do make a difference. So turning to cannabis edibles, it was uh, January 16th when cannabis edibles, extracts and topicals became available for purchase uh, online and in retail stores in Ontario. And Ottawa Public Health has been providing information to the general public as well as focused uh, information for youth, young adults, older adults, uh, which is the one demographic where we're seeing potentially some increase in consumption, and people who are pregnant or breastfeeding or chest feeding and parenting. Our messaging is focused on the potential harms of edible products, including overconsumption in adults and accidental ingestion among children and pets, harm reduction strategies, as well as safe storage practices. 
Ottawa Public Health is working with retailers locally to share our messaging and to gain a greater understanding of what their clients' information needs are. So next, the new Ontario Senior Dental Program was launched last year. And depuis sept ans, plus de 150 personnes âgées se sont inscrites et reçoivent maintenant des soins dentaires dans le cadre de ce programme. Ottawa Public Health continues to promote the program to dental offices and recruit additional providers. Uh, as well, we have submitted two business cases to the province to increase our treatment capacity to serve clients. And if approved, these submissions would increase the number of dental chairs at the Maryville Clinic from 7 to 11 and allow us to add a new 10 chair clinic within Ottawa. So turning to Ontario Health Teams, we did mention in December that the Ministry of Health had approved 24 across the province, and the Ottawa Health Team was the only one approved in our area. But I want to let you know that the other teams continue their local, uh, their work. So the Kids Come First, Enfants Avant Tous, has endorsed, uh, it's been endorsed as an innovative model. and, and the group, the number of partner agencies is continuing to plan work into 2020. Uh, the focus right now uh, most relevant to us is coordinated access and navigation service, a coordinated access and navigation service for youth and children with complex mental health and or substance use needs. And uh, so this other piece is uh, that under that uh, um, Kids Come First team is to work on empowering parents, children, and youth to self-monitor their immunization requirements. And this would be through the Can Immunize app that Ottawa Public Health is helping pilot. Santé Publique Ottawa participe au soutien des deux initiatives. So the Ottawa East Ontario Health Team, led by Hôpital Montfort, was given feedback by the Ministry to strengthen their application and select areas, and the team's actively working to address this feedback, and we uh, anticipate it's hoping to receive approval in the coming months. And then finally, uh, Ottawa Public Health has been involved in a team in West Ottawa, the Three Rivers on Ottawa. Ontario Health Team. And this group is led by Arne Prior Hospital and includes the Queensway Carleton Hospital and the West Carleton Family Health Team, among many other partners. This uh, Ontario Health Team is currently in development and it's seeking approval to move to the next stage, which would be to submit a full application in the coming months. Almost there. <laughs> in December, the Board of Health received an update on the progress made of implementing our strategic priorities. And um, that include uh, uh, a proposal to provide the Board with regular updates through semi-annual reports. And so I'm pleased to advise that further uh, to a request and internal discussion, we will be providing the Board with quarterly updates going forward. And so you can look for your next update on the April agenda. And finally, I'm very happy, I'm going to ask him to wave uh, from the back to introduce Dr. Brent Malachny. He is the new Associate Medical Officer of Health who successfully competed to fill a vacancy left by Dr. Jean-Viev Cadieux's uh, departure. So Dr. Malachny just joined us on January 29th. He brings over 25 years of public health experience working at local, regional, provincial, national levels. Uh, we're very pleased to have him join our team. He's already uh, contributed uh, insights and questions helping us with uh, navigating health system change. Uh, so please do welcome me. Welcome uh, Dr. Malachny actually back to Ottawa. So he was here when he was a resident and he was um, a participant in the time of the mass immunization campaign uh, for meningococcal, to prevent meningococcal disease. Um, so that was a campaign that in involved immunizing over 170,000 youth. So bienvenue, Brent. <laughs> and this concludes my verbal update. Uh, il me fait faire plaisir de répondre à vos questions. Member Alshantieri. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh, I, we heard inside on the presentation, uh, not everyone is tested, and so is it possible if, if someone have that virus be able to fight it without going to or seeking medical help, can they do it on their own? 
So I think uh, the question, just I'll repeat it in case uh, it's hard for everyone to hear, is, is related to the novel coronavirus. And mm -hmm. if uh, um, somebody is infected, they may not be tested if they have mild symptoms. Uh, so this would be in an area like Wuhan, China, or uh, Hubei province of China, uh, mainland China, uh, it, it is the case that people are doing well uh, for the most part. Um, and so not everyone uh, may be tested and they are recovering at home on their own. Um, in, in Canada, what we're looking at is we're, we're, st we're still trying to detect uh, cases here. So um, the cases that have been detected in Canada, seven of them, I believe only one was hospitalized. Uh, okay. I believe six uh, recovered at home. And um, so I'm not too sure if that answers your question. Yes, it does actually. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or can we receive the report? Proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is again um, uh, Dr. Tretches, I think you're presenting the PowerPoint. Yes. Um, so, and uh, that's the public health modernization update on Ottawa public health submissions in response to the provincial consultations. So the purpose of this item on the agenda tonight and the presentation where I'll go through some highlights is really to get your ongoing approval for our, our developing um, written submission, which it, it's, it's something we want to submit this week uh, based on uh, your feedback. And it has evolved since we first introduced some themes uh, for the feedback in December. Again, just to convey, uh, we think that the future uh, is now, that it's it's time for a next generation public health system. Uh, we've been working on communicating that to the provincial government that we, we see opportunity to strengthen the system and we're pleased to provide our ideas. So quick reminder, uh, since December 9th, when we discussed this, uh, we, we had committed to going out and doing more consultation. Um, so we wanted to ask the public as well about what they thought was important uh, for strengthening the public health system here in Ottawa. We used an online tool, Engage Ottawa, and that uh, allowed residents and stakeholders to provide feedback on how to shape services. There were a total of over a thousand people who, who visited this website website. Um, I think the website seemed of interest to about 400 who went further and explored it, uh, gathered some more information. We did only get about 100 people who responded to a survey question, but it gave us an idea. Uh, the types of feedback there were, um, you know, things that uh, people had experienced personally or uh, comments about populations that had uh, the greatest challenges to public health and that should be a focus of the public health system. We also asked stakeholders, um, you know, hospitals, community health centers, others to provide feedback, including the Francophone and Indigenous partners uh, that we work with. And so they shared their support for the way we work in collaboration, and they expressed the importance of continuing to make sure that public health can be planned uh, and adaptive to local needs. There was an internal survey we did as well on, on the four main themes and I, ideas that we wanted to communicate and uh, 90 Ottawa Public Health employees responded and uh, we were pleased to see 90% agreed with the four key messages uh, that outlines our, our vision for a strengthened public health system. So I think we see alignment between employees and, and uh, partners and the board. So the results of all these engagements are being put into a written submission. Again, uh, we're seeking your feedback and ideas tonight and we'll finalize this week. Uh, it has already been mentioned that the in-person consultation has been postponed and uh, we'll let you know when that is. So on the next slide, uh, again, just to share a little bit more uh, on the next two slides, that's, that's the only material um, left to share tonight, is this system, the vision we have for the system. So we spoke from the beginning about the strength that Ottawa Public has, Health has in the relationship with the city of Ottawa. And this is something we want to continue uh, to maintain and promote. Uh, we see many costs with trying to change that relationship. 
And we are pointing out that this semi-autonomous nature of the Board of Health uh, in Ottawa is also a strength. Um, it's a model potentially for others. Um, the semi-autonomous board has increased the visibility and credibility of the organization, the ability for us to get our message out, uh, the ability of, uh, for advancing healthy public health policy and strategy. The second point on this slide is that public health needs to be delivered locally and supported provincially. And I, I can use the novel coronavirus uh, as, a, as an example of, of how we see every part of the system is important to be strong. So the Ministry of Health is in connection with the federal partners. It promotes alignment uh, across the country. They, um, you know, they have tools and, and are working on products to promote consistent approach across the province that's valuable. Public Health Ontario has the technical expertise. They're doing the literature reviews once for the province, so we don't need to be spending our time uh, looking at all of the, the emerging literature. And local public health agencies like ourselves are, are using our networks on the ground, are, are connecting with hospitals, with other partners to make sure that the measures that are required are in place. And we're using the local communications channels and responding to the needs of our, our partners in the community uh, that we know so well. The, the third point on this slide to, to facilitate collaboration within regions is something that uh, we'll talk about further on the next slide, but we do see areas where we can reduce duplication and we are interested in sharing uh, some of our leading practices. And lastly, th driving prevention across the health system is actually almost a direct quote from the strategy that the board approved and we see that um, this is a way forward to increase prevention and promote health through the work of others. So this slide together uh, contains many elements, but um, no one on its own may be completely uh, transformational, but I think if we put all of these pieces in place, we would have a much stronger public health system. And so I'll take a, a moment to go through, through them, uh, starting with a common agenda. So we heard from many um, places from employees, from, from other health units, it, there is interest in having clear public health priorities across the province. You could think about something, for instance, like the Auditor General's report on chronic disease and the increasing burden of chronic disease. And so what are the, the things that would collectively make a difference for us to work on to, to tackle that, that issue? Um, and under this point, we want to highlight that's not a job just for public health. That's a job where we think common priorities to increase physical activity, increase healthy eating, decrease smoking and substance use could be taken up by all of the health sector and even across different ministries and different sectors. So we're looking for that common agenda along with common metrics. So uh, being able to have a system where it's clear how different parties are contributing to that goal. Where those measures uh, and, and performance uh, metrics are more public uh, or at least available between health units so that we can compare amongst ourselves and learn best practices. Uh, on the second, moving to the second element, uh, integration with health and social services and other sectors. This is again where we see that we could uh, assist Ontario health teams and the healthcare system uh, to increase the interventions that prevent uh, poor health and, and the, the initiatives that will promote well-being. We, around the role clarity and alignment, have a message there for the province that we do think uh, some things could be done once for the for the province and some things maybe uh, Public Health Ontario is best suited to, to carry out whether it's related to uh, analysis of data or um, research. The, the ministry itself may, may have some things that they can do once for the province but when you think about the ideas also that were mentioned like health promotion campaigns, I would argue that it's also something where Ottawa Public Health could do something once for the province. And so there's, there's a lot of strength in the field and so we're interested in mechanisms that, um, that draw on that strength to enable uh, less duplication. Uh, a new idea here um, that we haven't seen come forward from too many uh, other places, uh, as I mentioned, um, 
there are there, this consultations going on. There's other health units are, are submitting their ideas. I think some of what I've spoken about so far would be in common with many uh, of the submissions. The uh, idea of a regional service and collaboration hub is one uh, that we see where we could uh, aim to draw on the strengths of a, of a more um, uh, larger center where perhaps it's easier to recruit uh, expertise to support neighboring health units. Uh, this, this idea is something we took out to explore uh, with, with uh, colleagues in, in Renfrew and we have uh, some ideas that they started to, to raise with us that could be useful areas for more collaboration. And um, some of those uh, we've tried out already. We've piloted, for instance, the services of an epidemiologist to help with data analysis on a fee-for-service basis. So uh, some of the ideas are just going to be um, more sharing of materials and information, things that don't cost anything. Um, but where there is uh, something that makes sense to enter into a contract that's win-win, uh, this is uh, something the hub idea would support. Lastly, we see absolutely a transformation of public health services once we can all be on an electronic public health platform. Uh, imagine a world where public health records are connected to public health records in other jurisdictions or to the health care system to provide that seamless care if needed and also to to help with informing the health care system about the importance and the impact of health promotion and preventive initiatives. Um, we know other kinds of electronic solutions like the Can Immunize app could be expanded across the province and save many, many hours of parents, physicians, public health staff uh, time dealing with immunization records. And we do see there are services that could be provided virtually and that would help with covering geography. So again, some of these elements are going to be easier to implement, uh, can be implemented more quickly. Uh, some will take longer. Um, this is the vision. We're presenting some of the ideas, and our next step is to hear from you, uh, your thoughts about this material, the material in the report, and then uh, we'll be aiming to revise our written submission and send that to the province this week. We'll also use this content in the face-to-face -face consultation with the ministry once we know the date for that meeting. So I welcome your, your input. Thank you very much, Dr. Etches. I know how hard uh, you and the team have, have worked on this. And um, in terms of consultation, you've, I think you've hit everybody you need to, you know, partners, stakeholders, general public, uh, internal staff. Um, so I think what you're proposing tonight is well-rounded, well thought out, uh, and again, reached out to all the people that needed to be reached out in order to say to the province that we're presenting to you, a, again, a well-rounded uh, proposal which sort of uh, dots all the I's and crosses all the T's. Um, so thank you for that. Um, are there any questions, comments? Uh, Member Kavanaugh. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think that uh, this is a good layout. Um, I particularly like the fact that you're emphasizing the benefits of a connection to municipal, the, to the, to the uh, city here. Um, this is really important. You only have to look around the table of the fact that we have um, city councillors sitting with members of the public with expertise um, in the health field. That in itself is something that helps move it forward because the councillors have the um, background of, of seeing what's going on in the city as a whole and we're bringing that to the table. Um, and that is actually a big part of public health um, in terms of our planning, our, our official plan, our transportation plan. So to, to lose that connectivity uh, with the city would be very problematic, and um, uh, you just totally regret losing that. Uh, I don't see public health as something that's in a silo, and if it's taken away and put in with a bunch of other municipalities, it's going to be treated like a silo. It will no longer have that connection with a city, and a city our size of a million people, we definitely need that connection. And one of the the example, I just in terms of the nimblest. Nim being nimble on your feet um, for 
this, out, this outbreak that hasn't hit Ottawa, but the fact that you know the community inside out and you have the expertise of the city to, to reach out to people, uh, I just, I, I can't imagine what it would be like if we didn't have that because it would be just one step away from the community if we were not uh, all connected. So I, I would wonder if you have any comments on that for things like this. We're, you're so well prepared, you've done a lot of work but I'd be concerned if it was on a larger scale and you weren't right into the community like, like you are now. Uh, so I, I would agree with you that a, a local public health response to a, an outbreak or an emerging issue is important. Uh, you need to know your partners and you need to know who to turn to. Um, that said, it also actually is an example of where there are some things that could be provided in a regional hub. Uh, some of the communications products we prov prepared, for instance, for schools or other audiences may be able to be uh, used by neighboring health units. Um, so these, these are, you know, again, it's every level uh, is needed. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Menard. Thanks. Thanks for our member Menard. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Um, and thanks for the document. It's 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 excellent. It's very very well done. Um, I think particularly the areas around uh, you know the shared provincial responsibilities that that could help uh, with the sort of taking up of of uh, services that could be managed uh, provincially rather than locally is is a good a good way to communicate with the province. I think there's two there's two things I would I would suggest. One is is just to very clearly indicate what we are looking for from the outset. I think we've made the case. I think it's there. Um, but if we if we're looking to maintain Ottawa as a region on its own, without any other municipalities, I think we need to be clear with it. Or if we're looking to say, look, no, we we, we can be a hub, but and and include other local municipalities in there, but we want it stationed in Ottawa. I just. I think if we can be as clear as possible up front and, and the financial savings that come with that, um, that would be helpful. I know we have it in our, our minds where we're heading and I think the evidence is there. It's just that I would just say that, that up front. And then the other piece is, is uh, and you've done it in here, but how Ottawa is different. Um, I think you've, you've highlighted on, on region, on language. Uh, those things are, are clear. Um, but you know, uh, some other municipalities, smaller municipalities, may say, "Look, we we've got local connection too. Uh, we have integration as well." Um, and so, the more we can key in on why we're why we're different, I think the the better. And I, I think we there there is there are big differences, and there are savings associated with it, and the way our board is structured. Um, but those those two pieces, I think, up front would be would be helpful. Maybe you can uh, help me understand the the hub idea with Renfrew and where that came from. Why are we why are we collaborating with with Renfrew specifically? Uh, my understanding is that the Board of Health uh, for the Renfrew County and District Health Unit asked their senior leadership team to have a conversation with Ottawa Public Health senior leadership team around uh, ideas um, for increased collaboration, and that. Um, is just what we had. We just we had a, a conversation about ideas to increase collaboration, and we came up with a list of, of many ways we could collaborate, um, from sharing information to looking at um, providing uh, access to expertise that exists only in Ottawa. And uh, so I, I think it's an example. Of, you know, none of that is moving to implementation. Uh, it was exploratory, and, but it shows you what could be done. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great a great idea. Um, in terms of next steps, so there's oral and written submissions to the province. The date of the in-person consultation will be rescheduled. Um, I think it's ironic that they cancel it for why they canceled it, um, because health teams are out there uh, responding to, um, you know, coronavirus. So um, it, when that happens, when the in-person consultation happens, is it yourself and the, the, the chair of the board that would be there in person? or? Who goes? Who goes to that? Uh, to that meeting, and what what would happen after that? It, it's that's kind of evolving. Um, I, I'd like to say there was clear direction from the province as to uh, who they expect to be there. Um, so it, it is a bit of an evolving process um, as we get closer to it, and I'll let Dr. Edges, because she's had discussions as well, uh, jump in as well. We're hoping to get more clarity uh, over you know, 
do they want board members there, do they want councillors there, do they want the mayor there, city manager, all those sorts of things. Um, you know, they have uh, spoken to us in the past, but you know, what do, who do we think maybe should be there? But there's, there's again, Dr. Edson, I'm gonna ask you to comment, but there's not complete clarity okay. around who the audience is supposed to be at this point. Um, what we have to go by uh, is the past practice of the ministry. So the ministry is entirely uh, responsible for organizing who attends, sending out invitations, all of that is done by the ministry. What they've done in other areas is they seem to have invited uh, municipal councillors, including from multiple municipalities, if there are, uh, as well as uh, board members, uh, city senior staff, so city managers, and maybe senior public health staff. Um, yeah, we, we have indicated it may be helpful to hear from community stakeholders, like the Francophone community, First Nations, Inuit, Métis uh, partners, some of our partners. We, we don't know in the end who they'll invite. Um, I, I, I think the other thing I could mention is, is it, for the fourth, it was going to be everyone uh, f who they want to invite from the Renfrew area, as well as Ottawa, as well as Eastern Ontario Health Unit area. So uh, across a, a geography that's bigger than Ottawa. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for that. And yeah, I just say, again, well done on the, that document. I think it lays it out very, very well. Thanks. Thank you. Are there uh, any other, uh, mem Member Vanham? Hello, thank you. This uh, presentation has been great and I want to echo that um, the n new outbreak of the novel coronavirus has really demonstrated the importance of many of uh, the topics that are covered here in the vision for the next generation. Um, I do think that it's worth uh, highlighting the impact of the separation uh, if they were to move forward with separating the um, uh, city and the municipality from public health, I know that there's been a lot of work uh, to find cost savings and cost sharing when it when it comes to the administrative back end. Um, and so I think Ottawa Public Health can be a leader in that conversation about why that linkage is actually very useful. Um, I think it's so interesting look at that, looking at the uh, electronic public health record earlier today when we were talking about the coronavirus, talking about how not the cases aren't always reported. And I can only imagine that if that information was available in more of an electronic form across the board, you would have more cases and more data easily reportable. So I think that uh, you've done a very good job in highlighting some really innovative ways that will be able to better respond to things like a novel coronavirus or any other outbreaks that are on the horizon. Um, but I do think that highlighting uh, the impacts of the separation, but also highlighting uh, that investment in public health as, as we often hear, but I think it's important to uh, state again that uh, the investment in public health saves healthcare dollars down the road. Uh, and so any modernization talk should be looking at investing wisely and investing uh, in smart innovation uh, that will actually deliver better results. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Any? Yep, Vice Chair. Uh, just to echo what others have said about the quality of the report. I think it's really well done and I would commend um, the staff for looking at the public health modernization as an opportunity as opposed to a threat and uh, you know undergoing wide consultation and really taking that consultation to heart and uh, putting forward some really great ideas to further the agenda. So I think that's fantastic. Um, again, through the, the experience over the last few weeks with novel coronavirus, I think it's really demonstrated both the strength of OP to be out there and leading the way, as well as all of the relationships that go into that leadership. And so the fact that, you know, the city can activate their IMS, call on the hospital sector and the IMS structure through there to really have streamlined uh, channels of communication, I think is just demonstrates that all of the work in creating those relationships really matter when it comes to managing this type of crisis. And there's, there's no... Um, uh, 
the, the, the advantage of being in the spotlight right now, I think, can be leveraged in terms of really demonstrating the value of public health. So it comes at a good time, in my opinion, in getting it out there about the value um, and how the public really relies on public health to be a leader in this regard. So um, I think great feedback in terms of um, uh, recommendations to be included, but really kudos to the staff for putting in this much energy, which at a time when it could be uh, taken um, really as a, in a defense, you guys have really gone on the offense to demonstrate the value and the worth, and it's to be commended. Uh, sorry, uh, Member Menard, I don't think I answered your question about next steps. Uh, so once we do have a um, in-person consultation or maybe before that. I think the idea uh, that Jim Pine has communicated is that this will be an ongoing conversation. So he's going to look for ways to communicate what he's hearing. He's at some point going to find some forum that he's told us will not be a written report, but some way to communicate what he's recommending to the ministry. And there'll be some way for us to comment on that. Uh, so I think this will probably be an ongoing dialogue um, with things becoming clearer, depending on the novel coronavirus situation, I would expect by April. Thank you for that. Um, so we have two things to do with this report. Um, first is to receive the update for information. Received? And secondly, to approve that in response to the Ontario Ministerial Consultations and Public Health Modernization, the Medical Officer of Health provides submissions that are consistent with the approach described in this report. Approved? Okay. Carried. Thank you. Uh, our next uh, presentation is Auto Public Health's plan to support ad older adults to age well in our community. And again, we have a PowerPoint presentation uh, on that. Aaron, I'm going to turn the mic over to you then. Hello, bonjour. I'm excited um, to share highlights from our Aging Well plan with you this evening. My name is Aaron Saluski, and this is my colleague, Frost Van. Similar to the rest of the country and the world, Ottawa has an aging population, and this population is growing. By 2035, there will be an additional 134,000 older adults, and the greatest increase will be in those aged 85 and older. This group will double by 2035. The population is also becoming more diverse. Older adults are far from a homogenous group, and their needs vary considerably. Some subpopulations are more disadvantaged, such as those experiencing um, low income, unstable housing, social isolation, and we know that there are health inequities. Um, some groups, such as women, LGBTQ, Indigenous, newcomers, and those with disabilities may be more likely to experience poor health outcomes. In our community, 19% of those 65 and older are considered frail, and many are cared for by partners, children, or family members. Uh, one in eight adults provided care to a parent in the past year. Uh, we heard from older adults and their caregivers through consultations conducted for the most recent iteration of the Older Adult Plan and the still-to-be-released Eastern Ontario Caregiver Strategy. We heard that older adults want better access to information that is relevant and important to them, access to services that meet their unique needs and to be treated with respect. And caregivers identified a lack of coordination between healthcare, social and community services and a need for more public awareness and acknowledgement of the role of informal caregivers. Working on issues affecting older adults is not new for OPH. The plan builds on our past work and partnerships in the community. Um, OPH envisions a, a city where all older adults and their caregivers are healthy, safe, valued, and actively engaged in their well-being within a compassionate and inclusive community. The target population for this plan is adults age 55 and older and their caregivers who live in Ottawa. Around the vision, you'll see four focus areas. 
Each focus area is supported by a number of key actions, including core work in which OPH is currently engaged, <clears throat> as well as new initiatives and areas for enhancement. I will provide a few highlights for each focus area in the following slides. So the first focus area is that Ottawa is an age-friendly and compassionate city. The physical and social um, environments in which we live can enable all of us, including older people, to live healthier lives by making the healthy choice the easier choice. This might be physical things like benches to sit on to encourage walking outside, or social things like a community that celebrates the unique contributions of older adults and discourages ageism. We want a city where policies, services, and structures are designed to help older adults live safely, enjoy good health, stay involved, and feel supported during grief, serious illness, and end of life. We are working with partners, including Compassionate Ottawa, to foster a compassionate communities approach. A compassionate community is a community of people who are committed to improving the experience of those living with serious illness, caregiving, dying, and grieving. We convened a group of partners to advise on next steps and that, um, that would improve the experience for those at end of life. As a first step, we will work with these partners to develop a collective strategy for advanced care planning that will leverage each other's strengths. Um, advanced care planning is a key pillar of a compassionate community. Focus area two. Um, older adults and caregivers are engaged, their voices are heard and valued. In this area, we're seeking to improve our processes to engage with a more diverse cross-section of older adults in the planning of programs and services, including more disadvantaged populations. For example, working with Senior Center Without Walls program um, to hear from older adults who face challenges leaving their homes, or working with partners to seek input from the homeless or people living in rooming houses on how we can work together to support end-of-life care for these populations. In addition, we'll advocate more broadly for the voices of older adults and caregivers to be heard at appropriate tables. The third focus area um, is that caregivers of older adults are supported and have, have increased access to resources to care for themselves and others. The input provided during consultations undertaken for the development of the Eastern Ontario Caregiver Strategy uh, were eye-opening. Older adults and their caregivers face challenges to navigate health and social services. Part of the work that we'll do in this area will be to work with, um, work with partners to promote the new Ontario Caregiver Hotline and our own information line. We'll work with the new Ontario Caregiver Hotline to make sure they have local information on resources and programs for caregivers and ensure our nurses have the information that they need to support caregivers when they call OPH um, to ensure that caregivers have the resources they need. And finally, um, older adults uh, receive high quality evidence-based information, programs and services to improve, um, to maintain and improve their health. So just to give a few examples of work in this area, um, this year we have increased access to the Better Strength, Better Balance program. Um, we have increased the number of, of classes to accommodate more older adults in the program. And we will be launching um, a first of its kind public health run Facebook account for older adults, similar to our Parenting in Ottawa page um, in March. We're calling it Aging Well in Ottawa. So um, we will be undergoing periodic review and evaluation of the plan and will incorporate community and stakeholder feedback to evolve the activities as we progress. Our next steps, of course, will be to implement the actions in the plan and also continue to share this plan with internal and external stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that, very topical um, and very necessary. Um, any, any questions? Uh, Member Gower. Thank you. Um, I think it's a, a good plan and I support the initiatives. My question is about what kind of indicators are you looking for to tell us this plan is successful over the next few years? What, what, uh, how do we know if this plan is achieving what we need it to achieve? Um, so in the development of this plan, uh, we've identified a number of, of, of key actions um, that we will look to achieve. Um, we do collect data and um, on, on these um, programs and services. Um, 
and we will review, you know, review those ongoing um, to, to improve our service. And um, in terms of reporting back to the board, like should we expect a yearly report or an end of term report or what kind of updates will we get as we go through this? Yeah, so yes, we expect to um, come back and, re and return to share highlights and updates on, on the report. Um, perhaps an annually, I think looking at the schedule, um, you know, with all the other topics we will seek maybe an annually with all the other um, updates that will be coming forward from the other strategic priorities. I guess a general piece of feedback, I think from reading the, the background report, I think there are obviously surveys and data that's being collected. I think it'd be helpful for the board to have a bit of a benchmark and just so we can measure after two or three years where we're at and uh, how successful these initiatives have been. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I would just add, um, you can hear the commitment um, from Erin and her team to continue to get that feedback from the community about how are we doing. And so um, it, part of the information was qualitative. It was gathered from caregivers. And you know, so checking back in with caregivers would be part of evaluating uh, the project, as well as um, you know, turning to some of the, the surveys we have around health. Uh, but it, it takes longer uh, to see changes in actually health status of the population. So probably what we're looking at is, is uh, measures more at the program and, and the process level. And, um, and, and community input will be one of them. Member Kavanaugh. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate this. Um, I have the highest number of seniors in the city in my ward, um, I believe in the country outside okay. of Victoria. Um, and uh, so um, I get a pretty up close look at, uh, at what they're going through and there's all kinds of spectrums. One of the things I've noticed in terms of caregivers, I'm finding there's caregivers that are seniors looking after more seniors because of the length of uh, time that people are staying uh, alive. There's people in their late 60s, 70s looking after people in their 90s. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's a phenomena that uh, I've noticed in terms of that's the new reality. Um, one of the things um, I witnessed on the weekend is I was at Auto Community Housing Building and uh, they had a, a workshop uh, for connected Canadians and uh, it was to bring uh, digital literacy to, uh, to some of the seniors. Um, I, I don't know what you're working on that, if, if there's any work on that, but I found it really good that uh, these were people that had devices and didn't know how to use them. And um, they were paired up with uh, volunteer technicians who uh, were very kind to them and showed them what they can do. But um, in terms of one of the concerns I have is isolation and loneliness when people don't go to a job every day and um, they're, in, they're very isolated um, and to, con to make connections with people and yet so there's opportunities um, if they, even if it's electronically, sometimes it can help them. Um, has that been looked at? Um, yeah, I think that's part of the, well, it, it, it is part of the aims of our new Facebook page that, that we're developing. Uh, we know that the highest, demo, the largest, well, the, grow, the growing demographic using Facebook are older adults. And so, you know, see that this could be a platform where people can both access information, you know, to support health, but also to make connections with others. Yeah, and yeah, so, and so we'll, we'll be promoting that, that, that page for, for seniors to use and older adults to use. Yeah. Yes, and, uh, and a lot of them are um, struggling financially. Um, I, I think that's got to be recognized that not all of them are people with big government pensions. Um, there's quite a few that have been left behind, particularly women. Um, and so I have to ask my a question about uh, the, um, the equity lens. Um, has that been looked into because I'm finding the, I, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but I just want to hear what you have to say about it um, because um, that seems to be a, a, a big problem area for that particular demographic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, um, so that's something we'll continue to look, to, to look into as we gather feedback and information from older adults, making sure um, to um, access groups that maybe are facing in inequities, um, including women. Um, so as, as we continue to develop our programs, making sure that, that we in, um, involve the lens, that gender lens, so that the programs that we develop and services that we provide or promote um, are inclusive. Yeah, not to mention most of them are women because they seem to outlive men. <laughs> so I guess they're doing something right. Um, anyway, thank you very much. For your thank you. 
uh, Member Kuche some senior input. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Um, and thank you for the presentation. The, um, as, as, uh, as you know, we are in the midst of an official plan review and uh, Transportation Master Plan Review and the um, Ottawa Public Health in had the discussion paper building the building blocks for a healthy Ottawa and this is part of those building blocks. Are you able to relate how will you relate this um, uh, the, the, the plan for older adults important segment of our of, of our community to 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 that work, the official plan review, the transportation master plan. Um, yeah, we have a, an employee within our organization that's also working on the um, the official plan and the transportation master plan, and so <clears throat> we'll we'll be sure to share information with her to ensure those perspectives are brought forward, because. Um, you know, a community that's accessible for all is one that's age friendly and, you know, would work for somebody who's eight or would work for someone who's 80. And so it's definitely a, a part of this plan to, um, to be concerned about tran um, tr transportation issues in our official plan. And so working through our colleague uh, uh, will be one way that we will do that. As we um, consult with our communities in the next uh, couple of years with respect to the official plan review, um, is, is there a way to 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 highlight some of the some of the needs, some of the some of the elements that have a particular impact on uh, on our older population? Yeah, I think there would be opportunities to to do that well, as, as the consultations unfold. Um, you know, seeking maybe your input with those opportunities, as well as ensuring that you know. Um, we provide that information kind of internally. We can do that. With we respect, can, to we can take that as direction, Councillor. If you would like a product that's specific to older adults and um, elements that should be incorporated into uh, official plans, or um, we can help with that. I, I want to make sure that our, our official plan and the transportation master plan, which are are separate but but related, and and within that the different elements that the different um, segments that make up our, our community are, are well consulted and, and taken into consideration. And in that, that's a segue to point number two. Um, the second element of focus, um, older adults and their caregivers are engaged, their voices are heard and valued, and not only here, but in our community associations, very often there are, um, the, the people who participate in those consultations and those community associations are, are um, not representative, not as diverse as our, as our community is in terms of mobility, in terms of, of culture, of ethnicity. How can, and, and we see it in, in consultations that seem, not, 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 not for OPH, not, not for necessarily for auto public health, generally consultations that just the same the same um, segments of our of our community are, are the ones we hear about all the time how can we reach out better to to those older adults with respect to this and their caregivers that are not usually part do we have a strategy that will reach a, a segment of the older adult community um, of color, of indigenous, uh, francophones always, uh, of course, um, and, and other segments of, of our community that might not be represented in our, call, in, our, in our consultations. Is there a plan or a strategy to reach out for that? Um, so I think that's something that we can take back to, to work on. Uh, one mechanism that we could use is the Seniors Roundtable um, that supports the Older Adult Plan, um, has a diverse representation of older adults from um, varying backgrounds and various um, ethnocultural communities, LGBTQ, women, um, other groups. It's one mechanism, but I hear you. Um, there, there, there could be more to be done in that area. Okay. And, and again, not, not criticism of OPH or this plan, it's, it's just true across all our consultations, uh, at, at least from uh, uh, 
it's an issue uh, very often in our, in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, just, Councillor, I think that is the intent. The plan includes uh, that perspective that we must make that effort uh, to be relevant and look at communities with higher needs. Uh, one way we've been successful in connecting with populations with greater needs is through partners who work with those communities. Uh, so that's something we did, for instance, when we built our strategic plan. We made sure that we worked through intermediary organizations to reach populations that may not otherwise um, have their voice heard. And so this, this is something you know, we will continue to do uh, as, as a priority in this plan. And uh, Member Tilly, I believe you were next. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, looks like a great plan. Uh, looks like a broad-reaching plan, certainly, and uh, some broad-reaching objectives. And I see a lot in there about enhanced social media, enhancing the end-of-life care, and uh, preventative programming, assisting caregivers, getting information out to older adults. But I also notice it says there will be zero financial implications in using existing resources to accomplish all this. Is that because it was in the previous budget and it was budgeted for, or do you really think we have the resources to accomplish all this from the current setup, our current infrastructure? Um, yeah, so we'll be, um, we'll, we'll be using existing resources and refocusing our efforts in these areas. Um, and we do receive some funding for some of our programs, um, including BSBB and a Aging in Place. And then we, we get a little bit of funding from the Older Adult Plan as well to support some of this work. Um, and then refocusing the efforts of our current employees. Okay, because I think it's a valuable one. And if it did incur some costs, I think that's something you could bring back to your board. I know we're tight for money everywhere, but uh, it sounds like it's a valuable plan. I wouldn't want to see some of this missed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments, questions? Member Elson Thierry. Just a quick question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. But when you talk about uh, the rural implication, so what the mechanism you have in place to reach out to the rural area, especially the far rural? Are you working with the resource center like Western Ottawa Resource Center or the East End to reach out to other adult in the community in, in those areas? Yeah, so it's an area that, as, as, as Vera mentioned in, in the plan, is to ensure we, we seek a, ver a variety of diverse voices and ones that we maybe don't hear from as much. Um, and so working with new um, partners to ensure we hear the rural voice would definitely be part of that. So you are reaching out to folks like Western Resource Center or the East, South, and, and the Western. Is that correct? Uh, we, we will be. Okay, because they, or, they are but maybe I'll I mean, we have some programming already in place for seniors in rural areas. So we'll sure. build on those relationships. I and mean, we've promoted uh, services that are speci specifically for rural uh, populations. I don't know. If you, we can provide you with more information on what currently exists mm -hmm. and then uh, what we'll be building on. Is what I'm looking for when, when we read about social media activity on Facebook and all, well, we have to keep in mind some of our older adults don't have those options. And internet service in a rural area is nothing to be proud of sometimes. So uh, I like to, you know, to make sure we, we already have existing organization work with the older adult like the western in the west or the eastern and the south mm -hmm. maybe we can work with those organizations delivering the message to the uh, to the community okay okay thank you thank you any other comments questions yeah member Kavanaugh thanks um, one of the uh, big concerns that comes out of it with an aging population is uh, the prevalence of dementia and Alzheimer's. And um, I don't see anything uh, about you know, making recommendations for long-term care. That's one of the things I hear. Um, this is something very specialized, and um, just wanted your comments on that. 
Yeah, so brain brain health uh, is is a is an area that we are working on. We've um, also worked closely with partners. The Champlain uh, we're a member of the Champlain Dementia Network, um, and looking to coordinate services. And so some of our um, like we have we've collaborated with the. Um, the Dementia Society to develop some um, content around brain health and supporting and promoting brain health and worked with the Ottawa Public Library to promote those messages as well. Um, I think there's more, more to do. Um, we'll use some of our channels to continue to promote um, and to talk about dementia and brain health. But don't you agree we're going to have a tsunami of, uh, of needs coming in the future of, uh, for that group? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And we don't have the long-term care for it at the moment. Mm. I would just say I saw some smiles uh, that this older adult plan begins at age 55, um, which doesn't sound that old. Um, and and that one of the reasons for that is because we can prevent dementia with healthy eating and active living at age 55, 65, 75. It makes a difference, uh, you know, for older adults' health, how you are in middle age. And so part of, part of the dementia prevention strategy is to start younger and, and promote uh, healthy living. Thank you for that. Um, so we uh, have to vote to... Um, Approve. I'm not sure if myself, Councillor El Shantiri, and Councillor Kuche have to declare a conflict, um, <laughs> as we may all benefit from this plan, but <laughs> and a few others around the table. But uh, can we uh, can we approve this then? Okay. Thank you. Speaking of approving things. Um, in items number six and number seven, uh, while we uh, we did. Um, um, receive them, uh, we did not approve them. So we, I've just been kicked under the table by the clerk that uh, for item number six and, uh, or sorry, yes, yeah, six and seven, we also have to vote to approve. So on item number seven, can we approve? And on item number eight, can we approve? Oh, sorry, six and seven. On item number six, maybe you shouldn't have approved, maybe you should not have approved me for a second, a second year. So on item number six, can we approve? Can we, item number six, can we approve? Number seven, can we approve? Thank you. Um, all right. Um, moving right along. <laughs> we, we have dealt with all the substantive items. Now we need a motion to adopt reports. Member Leakin, if you could do that, please. <coughs> Be it resolved that the motion to adopt reports, Mr. Chair. Yes. Be it resolved that the confirmation of chair and vice chair report, the chair of the Board of Health verbal report, the medical officer of health verbal report, and the reports titled Public Health Modernization Update on Public Health Submissions to res in Response to Provincial <laughs> Consultations. Ottawa Public Health's plan to support older, older adults to age well in our community. Ottawa Public Health submission to the Government of Ontario on the Healthy Parks, Healthy People consultation. Ottawa Public Health submission to Health Canada on proposed vaping products, promotion regulations, and attendance at the Association of Local Public Health Agencies 2020 Winter Symposium and Board of Health section meeting be received and adopted. Carried. Carried. Are there any notices of motion um, requiring a suspension of the rules of procedure? No. Are there any notices of motion for consideration of subsequent meeting? No. Uh, Member Lakin, if I could ask you to uh, move the confirmation bylaw, please. <coughs> Be it resolved that confirmation bylaw number 2020-1 a bylaw of the Board of Health for the City of Ottawa Health Unit to confirm the proceedings of the Ottawa Board of Health at its meeting of Feb 10, 2020, be read and passed. Carried. Carried. Uh, are there any inquiries? No. Uh, I uh, move that we adjourn then. And our next meeting will be on April the 20th, uh, 2020. Thank you.